In this video, we're going to talk about unions and intersections of interiors of sets in a topological space. So let's start off with the definition of the interior of a set again. So let's say usual setup, X is a set and T is a topology that's on that set. Uh, so we'll call X comma T a topological space. And let's say that A is just a subset of your space X. So the interior of A is the following set. So the notation that I'll use for it is INT and then of A, so like parentheses A, kind of like function notation. Uh, what's it gonna be though? It's the following. It's the union of all your open sets, so all the sets in the topology such that that open set's contained in A. So we're just gonna take the union of all the open sets that are contained in A. That is what the interior is. So a couple consequences of this little formula here, or this definition. So the interior of A is the largest open set that's contained inside of A, right? If you're taking the union of all possible open sets contained in A, remember in a topology, the union of opens is open. Therefore, this also is an open set that is going to be contained in A. And uh, the other thing is another consequence of this definition is, is that the interior of A is a subset uh, of A itself. So that's going to be useful for us later on. Kind of like, remember the other way, the closure contains the set. Here, the interior is contained in the set. Uh, so let me give you an example just so you're comfortable with what the interior is. Think about the real numbers as our, as our set, and T is the usual topology. All I mean by that is, you know, a good old open interval from college algebra is what you could think of as a typical open set. Uh, so what if I took this set, uh, this interval, from 1 to 3, where I include 1 but don't include 3, and I want to know what's the interior of that, what is the interior of that? Uh, all you're going to do is just think about, hmm, what's the biggest open set contained in that? It would just be the open set from 1 to 3, where we don't include 1. So in other words, we just knock 1 out, and now we've got, again, the largest open set that's contained in A. So the meat of this video is uh, how does the interior, this operation of taking the interior of a set in a topological space, how does it behave when you do unions and intersections? So if you've got two subsets, A and B, then the following two things are true. The intersection of the interiors is the same thing as the interior of the intersection. Uh, from part two, though, you see that the union of the interiors is at best, or in general, contained in the interior of the union. And we'll go through the proof of both of these individually. So let's start. So let's take a look at the proof. And maybe one, number one might be believable from a picture. Uh, so for number one, you know, if I had my two sets, kind of a goofy Venn diagram down here, I'm saying, uh, you know, think of the interior as uh, just kind of like what I've colored. I, I haven't, where I've colored, don't think of the boundary. So the interior is just the inside. And so if I said, okay, take the interior of A, the pink, and see where it overlaps with the interior B, which is the green, then that overlap should just be, again, the shaded part. What's the shaded part without the boundary of the actual intersection? And we're saying that that's the same thing, that should be the exact same thing as just go ahead and take the inside of A intersect B. And so let's prove that number one is really that intuitive. So how does that look again? Or just to remind you, as far as like proven stuff goes, you're gonna prove two sets are equal. It's typical to show that uh, both subset relationships are true. So first we're gonna show that the left side is a subset of the right side. So to do this, we'll just pick an element over here and try to work our way through the definitions to conclude that that element actually lives in here. So you're probably pretty used to that. So let's go ahead and let X be an element of the intersection of the interior of A with the interior of B. And we think about what that means, well, like we said above, the interior of A is a subset of A. So if X is in the interior of A, then X is in A itself. And by the same logic, X is also an element of B, since it's also in the interior of B. So what have we got so far? X is in A and X is in B, thus X is in the intersection of A with B. And then now what are we going to think about? So what did that just show? That just showed that we took any element of the intersection of interior of A with interior of B, and it winds up in A intersect B, therefore the intersection of the interiors is a subset of the intersection. Now let's take a look at this a little more closely. I know that the interior of the intersection, that should be the union of all the open sets that are contained in A intersect B. But take a look at this. I know that the intersection of two open things in a topology is still open. So we'll look, here are two open sets that are contained in the intersection here. This should just be part of this big union of all open sets here. So what I'm getting at here is that the intersection of just these two open sets is definitely gonna be a part of the union of all open sets contained in A intersect B. 
And so uh, what does that show? Well, that shows the first subset relationship that we need to have. Remember, we're going for an equality. So the next thing we're going to try to do is show the reverse subset relationship is also true. So now let's let x be a member of the right side. So different x, by the way, not the same x as I was using up here. You're probably used to that if you've been watching my videos for a while. We're just recycling the letter x. Not the same element as before. So now let's go the other way. Let's let x be an element of the interior of a intersect b. And we'll just kind of go through the definitions of what does that imply? Well, if x is in the inner interior, then x is also just an element of a intersect b. Because remember, the interior is a subset of a intersect b here. And so what does that mean? Well, by definition, x is in both a and b. And what does that show then? Well, I took any x that started in here, and, uh, and then what in particular, that element, or yeah, x is an element of a, and it's an element of b. And we're gonna use that to our advantage here, because that shows that the interior of the intersection is a subset of a, and it's also a subset of b. And we're gonna apply the exact same logic from before, where, well, here's an open set that's contained in a, so that open set on the left there that I've highlighted, it should be just a part of the union of all the open sets that are contained in A. And so again, since interior of A is the union of all those open sets here, he's just a little part of that union. Interior of A intersect B is just a little part of that. So I claim that uh, the interior of A intersect B, it's pretty clear then from the definition that that should just be contained in the interior of A. Again, this is part of the union that this is defined by. And the same exact logic applies to say that the interior of A intersect B is a subset of the interior of B. And so if the interior of A intersect B is a subset of both of these, then it's a subset of the intersection of those two things as well. And uh, that again is the reverse inequality. And now that I've got uh, one's a subset of the other and vice versa, that's how you conclude that two sets are equal. So hence, the interior of the intersection is the uh, same as the intersection of the interiors like we claimed. Let's go back up to number two. We want to show that something kind of similar holds with unions, but we got to be a little bit more careful. In particular, I don't have two inclusions here. I just have this strict one that uh, the interior of A uh, union the interior of B is generally contained in the interior of the union. So we'll prove this is true. Let's do that then. So go ahead and take an element that's in the interior of A, union the interior of B. And well, like before, I know the interior of A is a subset of A, and the interior of B is a subset of B. So if X is in, you know, interior of A or interior of B, then we should be able to say that X is in A or X is in B. In other words, X should be in the union of A with B. Now, what does that show then? We just took an arbitrary X that's in the union of the interiors, and we showed that it landed in just A union B. Therefore, the union of the interiors is definitely a subset of A union B. And now we're gonna apply uh, the same logic we've been using, where here I've got the union of two open sets, therefore this thing is open, and it's contained in A union B. Well, therefore this that I've highlighted, that should just be part of the union of all open sets that are contained in A union B. And remember that union is exactly what the interior of A union B is. So since the interior of A union B is the union of all the open sets that are contained in A union B, uh, remember how you should think about this is, well, look, these are just a few open sets. They're part of that union. So this is contained in the union of all open sets uh, that are contained in A union B. And that finishes that proof. So maybe you're wondering, you know, how come, can you give me an example where this isn't an equality, where this is a strict, in, uh, uh, strict subset relationship? Strict containment, I think is what I'm trying to say. And sure, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So be careful. It's possible that they aren't equal to each other. In other words, you know, the one containment's always true, but it's possible the reverse containment's not. Therefore, the equality may not hold. And so just to give you kind of an easy example, let's let x be the real numbers again. Let's take t to be the usual topology. Let's take our subset a, our first subset to be the rational numbers, I'll denote it by q. And the complement of that would be the irrational numbers. I'll de denote that by b, where I'm using, this is like set minus notation. Just think of that as the complement of the rational numbers. And uh, so in that case then, you know, if you took the interior of A, in other words, what's the union of all the open sets that are contained in the rational numbers, that should be the empty set. And uh, if you think about that, is it possible? I'm in the usual topology, right? So for better or worse, you know, think about a typical open set as being like A comma B. 
I don't care uh, how small you make that, it's not possible for an interval like this to only contain rational numbers, right? I know that uh, the irrational numbers are dense, if you've heard that word before, uh, on the real line. So it's not possible for a typical interval to only contain rational numbers. And so that is why uh, the interior then has to be the empty set. And the exact same logic applies for the irrational numbers, right? I know that it's not possible for a typical interval, like from A to B, to only contain irrational numbers. I know that there are infinitely many rational numbers that sneak into that interval. So that's why uh, the interior then of, uh, of the irrational numbers is empty as well. Well, let's take the union of those. The empty union empty is still empty. But now, what if I took the union first? So what happens if you take A union B? Well, the rationals union the irrationals are the reals. And so that's what I'm saying to you right here. And what if I take the interior of the reals? Well, I mean, the reals are also my whole space. Look at my, my ambient space, if you want to call it that. So the interior of the set itself, well, it's already open, so it's just itself. So the interior of the reals is itself in this case here. And so uh, just to highlight, what are we getting at? Here's an example where if I take the union of the interiors, that is not the same thing as the interior of the union.